Good morning. Um, my name is Steve Lindauer. I am the public affairs officer with the Southern Indiana Leatherneck Detachment of the Marine Corps League. We're on uh, Scuttlebutt um, unit, or event, event number 11 uh, this morning. Uh, I'm sitting here with uh, State Representative Stephen Bartels, uh, or is it Bartels? Well, it depends on it. Either one I still answer. Okay. To, yeah. All right. All right. I think of Bartles and James. Anytime exactly. I can relate with a little bit of alcohol in it, I, it's easier for me to remember. <laughs> I like to remember that. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So Steve is my guest here this morning, and, and um, we're talking a little bit about this uh, town hall event coming up. And Steve, I'm going to ask you to maybe explain a little bit what's going on, what the purpose is, and uh, the date and time and all that sort of stuff. Sure. Well, thank you, Steve. And once again, good morning to you also. Yep, thank you. I uh, appreciate you um, asking me to be here today and kind of talk about this upcoming event. And uh, for you who's out there in the audience who don't know, Steve is also the father of my roommate at the State House, right. my good friend uh, Shane Lindauer, right. State Representative for this area. But the upcoming I was event, here first, by the way. Uh, yeah, okay. He's got the notoriety, but I was here first. <laughs> Well, I think people recognize him. Better, yeah, so. I think they do. Yeah. But so, yeah, the upcoming it. event uh, is at the Potoka Lake Winery. It's September the 13th. Uh, it is from 4 to 6. And the intent is to have veterans throughout the area regionally, not just Jasper, not just Du Bois County, but uh, multiple counties surrounding this area, to come in and discuss some topics uh, when it comes to the veterans organizations, what their needs are, uh, some of their wishes, uh, some wants and some things that we need to do as a community. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, so hopefully uh, this invitation is for everybody. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something we at, uh, we're at Scuttlebutt. One of the main main reasons we do this is because we've recognized that we're not always reaching the, the veterans organizations within not only within our county, but sometimes within next towns within our county. So uh, one of the main purposes for Scuttlebutt and what we're trying to do here is to bring those people together, bring all of these various organizations together so that we're working towards the same goal. And that goal being, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to show the community what kind of benefit veterans are to the community and then also help veterans that are that are need and making that transition back out. So that's kind of what you're doing here with the town hall event, correct? It, it is. And also it's very important to let the families know that this is an event for them. So we're going to talk about things like the uh, family support groups. We're going to talk about the military uh, family military support fund. Um, and so they need to know that there's um, money, resources, uh, and people that will help them with their veterans. So it's also some family members. So we, we want to see them come out. Um, we're really at the state working on uh, policy that will help families get their veterans they, they help they need, even if the veterans themselves cannot fill out paperwork, cannot attend these things. So it's important that families come to this event, too. My experience has been really sometimes it, it might be the family member that pushes this. Um, you know, so many times when guys and gals get out. It's uh, sometimes it's not always a pleasant experience that they've been through. Sometimes, yeah, most of the time, we are. You know, you got good and bad with any anything. But uh, from my perspective, I, I seem to remember the good times and don't always remember the bad times. or try not to. And I, and, uh, I didn't see combat. And I think you did, and a lot of other folks did. And uh, you know, I can't speak for them, but uh, uh, maybe it's just you know human nature that you you kind of push stuff, bad stuff to sure. the back. And so uh, and sometimes that can be an issue, too, which we'll correct that. Well, we'll uh, talk about that another time. Sure. Actually. I just want to make sure I, I did not see combat. Obviously, my father did uh, okay. as a Marine. Uh, but you're, you're right. There's, this is about uh, making sure that uh, more about information. That, right. That's really what this is about. And we're going to talk about upcoming policy. Um, you know, here's some things that a lot of people don't know in, in our area in southern United. There's a veteran's home. It's 100 beds short. There's 100 open beds in this veteran's That's home. That's ridiculous. And uh, we're working at things to to fill these. It's a resource there. It's it's kind of has fixed costs. Um, so one of the concepts is, is, you know, if you move here as a veteran from another state, um, that you can actually go to this facility as long as you become a resident within six Where's months. Where's that located? I've That's never up heard in Indianapolis, yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah, okay. so we're, we're, these are the kind of things. That so we're it's a state working. kind of thing, statewide. Correct. Yeah, it's okay. run by uh, DAB and some other organizations to help fund that. So That's we, good news. I, I had no idea. And, you know, if with that thought in mind, there should be no reason we got homeless veterans, at least for exactly. you know, hundred of them. Exactly. So, um, yeah, that's good news. I, I had no idea that existed. That's great. Yeah, and we definitely want to have, you know, the big four will be there, representation of all of them. And we're going to talk about different policies like veteran service officers, county veteran service officers. You know, what should we be doing across the state to standardize that? So right. no matter where you move to, if you come to the state, you're getting the same information, uh, the same access. 
Uh, so the big four, along with um, my committee, I'm also the chairman of Public Safety and Veterans Affairs. So we're working on these policies that work across the state. Could I ask you, for those of the viewing audience and the listening audience that doesn't know what the big four are, could you please explain that? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, are you members of of, of the Big Four? I don't. Uh, I don't. Marine Corps League is not as we speak. Right. So let, let's start with there. I'd like to see the Marine Corps League. That's one thing we're pushing to be coming right. a Big Five. We'd uh, like we to hope do that here too. The next year, yeah. year or so. So I know there's been a big push for that. Um, so I, I think that um, these organizations that represent uh, these different groups within the veterans, um, they're, they're they're learning to work together more and more. They're they're commonality, and so I think that this will be a big push. Uh, we see them coming together instead of just necessarily having the VFWs, the American legions having a focus. A lot of times our focus is the same. This is a way to consolidate resources and manpower and, and volunteers, you know, like yourself, uh, get together and, and have a push that actually benefits veterans and their families. Very much exactly what we're talking about for Scuttlebutt. We're trying to coordinate our efforts so that, uh, so the big four consists of the American legion, yep. uh, VFW, yep. uh, national guard. No, they are not part of the big four. Okay. Uh, and then there's the, uh, uh, DAV. the DAV. Okay. Disa- or not disabled. I always say always to say, always think of disabled, but the Department of Veterans Affairs. Oh, okay. Because of the big four. And then what I'm lost, I'm lost the last one. And we got an audience here. Anybody? I'm losing it because I got stage right. Okay. If, if we missed you and you're out there, we're yeah, sorry. We're, 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 we're we apologize. Up with you. So, uh, you know, you got to deal with who you got to work with. You, but, you got uh, military people on camera. We yeah, do well all the time, yeah. So. Somebody's back there on the other side of the camera screaming at exactly. you, idiots. What about that? But so, also, we want to address some issues with the National Guard too. Okay. Um, you know, Indiana used to be uh, per capita in the top three. Um, Are you still active? In National I am not. I retired. Yeah, okay. I did twenty two years ago. Well, thank so, you for your service. Yeah, thank you for yours. Long time. Um, yeah. So I think that uh, we're looking at how do we bolster our recruiting and retention of National Guard. You know, we we, we were in the top three. We're, we're slowly moving down. So we're going to look at benefits for our National Guard. What can we do? Um, and, and it's a balance, right? And, and this is what I tell people when they look at me and they say, you know, what what, what more are you going to do for veterans? I say, well, I want to do everything I can, but also we have a state constitution. Right. And it's very specific where we don't treat classes of people different. So there's a balance there. So we got to make sure that um, these benefits are balanced and they're earned. Um, which we talked about a little before uh, the meeting here today. So you that's know, kind of what I have to do as a chairman. I got to okay. balance those things, and so. Okay. So uh, in in one of our previous segments, I, I forget exactly the stats. So I hope I don't mess this up. But uh, my understanding is Du Bois County, or at least Southern Indiana, per capita, mm-hmm. is one of the highest has one of the highest veterans. Yeah, Du Bois. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's very. And up. so uh, we're really proud of that. But at the same time. Uh, Wow, you know how come how come these guys don't know about some of these benefits? You know, and uh, yeah. speaking for myself, there's there's benefits that uh, that I qualified for after the fact that uh, you know had no clue. Uh, you know, we, we talk about when you go in the military, it's 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 not it's not easy. Don't get me wrong, but all you do is follow directions. I mean, every, every vet that is, that's gone in. Just do exactly what you're told. That means you jump in a mud puddle. That's what you do, head first, whatever. And you and you're running miles, and you're exercising, you're going through all the physical fitness stuff and all the discipline. But all you do is do what you're told. Yeah. Getting out, at least from my whenever I got out back in the in the mid '70s, it was don't let the door hit your butt. <laughs> and now, um, now I understand there's different programs yeah. where they've kind of corrected that a little bit. But um, you know. I, I didn't do squat when I got out for the first 10 years until somebody approached me about joining the Marine Corps League. And I uh, said, do I have to get my hair cut again? You know, so, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can. You can yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you got two. Of them. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, it's uh, the transition to getting out is is a lot more difficult than going in in, in those those terms. So. Well, we hope with this uh, town hall event that we can answer some people's questions, some families. We hope we uh, can hook some people up with their uh, yeah, benefits um, and at least point people in the right direction. And honestly, start developing some uh, criteria and policy for this next upcoming session. So I appreciate okay. being on the show. Well, we appreciate having you, uh, Steve. And uh, by the way, I like that name, Steve. Uh, Steve. <laughs> We're going to have to call this a Steve and Steve show. But uh, thank you for coming down. I know it's kind of late notice. And uh and uh, you were gracious enough to uh, to come down here. I I did tell you where a certain time. I'm not sure why you didn't do that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> so I did catch Steve off guard. So uh, so you know we take you as you are. We we want you for your intellect, not for your looks. So you know you're like the rest <laughs> of you, dude. <laughs>
face for radio. Right? There you there go. You go. There yeah, you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we'll uh, we'll see you in the next session of Scuttlebutt.